forward on this computer and share screen. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go directly into DocuSign because we're going to be talking about documents right now. And so I want to go over the actual um, DocuSign room and talk about that. Ooh, hold on a second. And then um, we can always connect and go in through command um, a little later. Okay, so when you sign directly into DocuSign, as you know, um, if you haven't opened it with a room, um, or I'm sorry, uh, started the transaction in a command, then it will take you directly into the room of your DocuSign. Uh, when you sign directly into DocuSign from the KW Mullinex Tech page, uh, it will take you to this e-signature spot. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna make myself smaller because I don't, there we go. And then uh, I'm gonna switch to my rooms. And um, for this particular example, I'm going to use this, it says PDFs here uh, room. I'm going to use this one because I already have some documents in here so that way we can kind of go over what the different types of documents are and what they're gonna look like so that way you'll be able to differentiate them in your rooms. So it automatically is gonna open me in details. I'm gonna switch over to documents. And then as you look here, you can see I already have my stuff kind of sorted out just a little bit. So when you open a room, the very first thing you should do is go to this actions button and add folders. Before you even put a document in here, you should be creating folders. You can see I have an archived folder. I have a certified documents folder. I have a miscellaneous folder and then I have room docs. If you leave every document that you put into DocuSign into your room docs and just leave them there, you will have a nightmare of a situation when you go into your command and you're trying to upload documents because you won't know what is what. Command does not differentiate what is a form and what is a completed PDF. If they are titled the same, they will look the same in command for you to select and you may very well end up putting in a blank document into command for compliance which is not what we want to happen. So it is very important that you have your DocuSign rooms organized in a way that you can easily differentiate between uh, forms and PDFs and what is a certified document. So that way when you are uh, submitting for compliance you're pulling in the correct forms and you're not having to go back and replace them. Uh, because Bob says, hey, this <laughs> doesn't have anything on it. So that way you can tell. Also, it's very important because say you have somebody uh, put in, uh, let's think, what would be a good one that you might have duplicates of? It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that um, if you have a document in here, say this blank addendum to purchase, and then you send out a new one because they've added, well, and I also want the microwave. So you send out the blank addendum that includes the microwave and it comes back, if you don't have them in two different places, you're going to select a blank addendum that may or may not have the microwave included for compliance review and you don't want to do that. You want to make sure it's the right one. So, like I said, I have this listed like this. Well, I'm also going to add a folder that says listing folder. Great. Um, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna rename that real quick because I just realized this one's a buyer. So instead of listing folder, I'm gonna put um, under contract, one, two, three, main. Okay, so now I have my under contract, one, two, three, main street. And I'm also going to add a folder And you can put something like, um, what would be a good one? 
put something that you might, you know what? I'm not gonna add another folder because I have the archive. That's the one I was thinking of. Okay, so I have my folders in here. Now I'm gonna be moving my documents around. You're gonna notice that there are different colors in the labeling. If it is red, it is a PDF. That means it's basically a read only. Hold on one second, I'm just gonna shut this door because it's a little loud. Okay, sorry, there were some people in the cafe, so it was a little loud. Okay, so you have PDFs in here, flat PDF. It's gonna show up as red. You're gonna have signed with the green check mark. That means it's something that has been signed and returned to you, okay? These are also flat PDFs. Once something is signed, it cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. So if you needed to make a change to this document, you would have to resend it for new signatures. Um, you will also receive certifi uh, certification documents just to say that um, it has all the timestamps and everything like that. That will also be a PDF. I have a certified docs um, folder because you don't need these to be part of your compliance review. So I just like to put all of them in one spot so that way I know I can basically ignore them when I get into command to select my documents because anything in that folder is not going to be something that would go in there. So, and then I also have the archived, which we kind of stumbled upon this um, at one point and we realized that if you have a document in another folder, um, and you archive it, it will still show up as an option for you to select in command because command does not sort out your archive documents from your active documents. It shows all. It will, it's just how the system works. So I have an archived folder. So that way, anytime you plan on archiving a document, you will first select it and move it to the archive folder. And then you can archive it from there because when you pull up command, to select your documents for um, compliance, anything in the archive folder you will know is not the accurate document. Um, again, red means PDF, green is signed, and then down here you're going to see these blue ones, which are forms. These are reusable, meaning you can fill them out and change them. They are not signed, and you can add them to envelopes. I'm sorry, hold on one second. It looks like somebody is trying to get into this class and they're not having very much luck. Um, I am in the class right now. on Facebook. Okay, so um, you'll see the blue ones here are um, forms. Those are refillable, meaning that if there is something that needs to be changed, you can change it on here, and then uh, you can always add it to your envelopes, resend it for signatures, and it will come back as a PDF. It'll say signed, and um, you'll also receive a certified document for it. So, that being said, um, I'm going to sort some of these out real quick, just so that way. So I'm gonna go one, two, and this one, and I'm going to move these to my folder in a current room, and I'm gonna go under contract, just so I have something in there, and move. So you can select multiple documents to move them all at once. So if you have an entire packet of documents that you would like to relocate to your under contract, you can select multiples and then move them. You can also um, take them out of folders, obviously the same way. You just select however many you would like, and then you can move them to whatever folder it is 
sites that you need to move it to. We're gonna say, move it. okay. So you can do that. Just giving it a second. There we go. And oh, I forgot to do my phone. This is just the worst. <laughs> I'll be right back. So oh, sorry about that. Sherry is nice enough. She's forwarding my phones for me real quick. Okay, so we moved some documents. Fantastic. Now, what is true uh, about some documentation is that there may be something that may require you to combine it into a single PDF and or split it apart. So say, you have um, an entire buyer's packet and somebody gives you wet signatures on that packet, right? You may have something like um, your agreement, so your buyer brokerage agreement. You may have something like a um, lead-based paint plant fillet. You may have all sorts of documentation that you would have them sign and say they signed it in person and you could scan it in, right? It would be a single PDF all together. That's absolutely fine because the nice thing about DocuSign is that you have the ability to split apart documents, right? So I'm just gonna look at this one and see, this is five pages, perfect. So this here has five pages, right? Now say this was an entire buyer's packet and I needed to divide it up into three sections. This little page button, it says document actions. You can select that document actions. And the third choice down is split, right? So you go ahead and hit split. And I'm gonna say that this is buyer page one, right? And I'm gonna say, I only want documents on page one through two to be here. Sorry, one second. Okay, I'll be right I'll be I'll be I'll be right back. Sorry, this is just um, a busy morning. I've had a busy morning. Okay, so the second document I'm going to say is, um, what would be a good, let's go with buyer, uh, and we're gonna say that this is only gonna be pages three and four. Oopsie, three through four, there we go. And you'll see it highlights them blue. So even if you're not 100% sure that you've typed that in correctly, it will highlight which pages you're actually referencing. So you can see I have buyer page one, oopsie, space, here we go. And when I select that, it shows me that these are the two pages that are being selected to be part of that packet, that document. My buyer breakdown is gonna be three and four. 
And then I'm going to add a document that's going to say buyer page end. And that's going to be just page five, right? Now, say that what I really needed was two and five to be part of this last one. Okay, so you can do two comma five. And now you'll see that two and five are selected to be this part of this document here, right? And now I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna reload. Sometimes you just have to give it a second to go through the whole process. And like I said, everything that comes into your DocuSign room is automatically going to be going down here into your room docs, which is why it's so important to have those folders. Because if you have 30 documents in your room docs, it's a lot of documents to try to sort through and figure out in command which ones are the ones that you need in order to be in compliance, right? So you have buyer page one, that's the one we just created. We have buyer breakdown two, and we also have buyer end page. That's the document breakdown that I just created. Now, I have these three separate documents. They're really supposed to be a single document. I wanna combine them into one document, right? So I have selected these three. Well, now I also wanna put my exclusive right to sell in there. So I'm gonna select that one as well, right? Okay, and then when you come up here, it's going to have these options and there's gonna be a combine button, ready? What is my new document gonna be called? It's gonna be called my buyer packet. I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna come down here and you're gonna see, this is what's really important, this is the original document that I split apart. I didn't move it, it's still sitting there. If I were to go in there, if I didn't know that my buyer packet four was still sitting here, I'd be in trouble because I would select that one, right? Not the new one. So we're gonna move that one to archived. Let's see. There we go, archived, move. I broke that document all apart. After you move everything, it does reload every time. So then I broke it all apart. Now I have buyer two, uh, buyer page one, and buyer end page, right? Well, all of these documents, again, are in the rooms docs. What I need them to be is in my miscellaneous. So again, you're gonna move them, and I'm gonna put them in miscellaneous. And then this is the, oops, I forgot it has to reload. And now this buyer packet right here, this is the one we were starting with. I actually had it in there twice because I've used this example before. But um, this buyer packet is actually the one that uh, we just created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that one and I'm going to move it to under contract, there it is. And I'm gonna hit move. So now when I go into command and I'm looking for my um, compliance, when I'm looking for my um, compliance document to, or I'm sorry, my document to submit for compliance, I can go into my under contract and there is my buyer packet. And it's not going to get confused with the one that I previously had or any of the broken down documentation that I um, had broken it apart into right? So that is how you split and combine documents. Now we've also discussed what the difference between a PDF, the signed, the certified document, and the form is. So if you have used DocuSign in any way, you may say, okay, well, she doesn't have any templates in there. So this is where documents gets a little bit confusing for people, and it's why our next DocuSign is specifically going to be on envelopes. And then the one following that is going to specifically be on templates. So templates is something that you can create that will default certain information every single time the document is used. The downside of templates is you cannot add them into your DocuSign documents. 
you can only access templates in the envelope. So what does this mean? There are certain forms that we as a market center have templated for you. Things that are frequently used by you as real estate agents, which includes the blank addendum. I, I have tried to uh, request that DocuSign make the blank addendum into a refillable form uh, on many occasions and they have not done so because they say that they can't. I don't know the legalities behind the whole reason that they can't, um, but they said that they can't. So we have created it as a template for you and it is available to you in your envelopes. Like I said, we're gonna have a class on envelopes next week. Just know that if you need a blank addendum, you have to come in here to the envelopes tab and add it under this use a template. The shared with me are the ones that are coming from the market center. And they're all gonna say Sherry's name because Sherry is the uh, document's owner of our market center. So anytime that we are doing something with DocuSign, it's always gonna say that Sherry is the person who started your room or Sherry added a document in your templates, anything like that. It's because she technically is the MCA, um, so everything kind of circulates through her name because she's the market center. So you're gonna see blank addendum is here. Now there are tons of templates in here because there was a little bit of a lag during our transition to DocuSign. So we started putting a lot of things in here and just creating templates so you would have access to them more immediately. The, um, so like your buyer brokerage service agreement, that's available as a form in your documents tab. So you do not have to use this. This is just for the forms that we can't use or the documents that we can't use as forms, including the blank addendum. So I'm just going to save and close and come back to our documents. So templates are only available in that section of DocuSign. They will never be in this documents tab, okay? Um, another thing to know is that if you do need to add something to your DocuSign room into your documents tab, you hit the add button up here, right? This allows you some options. The Google Drive, if it was shared to you, if you do not have it, please let me know and I will share it with you. There should be a folder with a bunch of contracts and forms that we had downloaded from Dot Loop prior to our transition. And um, if there is a form that you are looking for and you can't find here and you just wanna be able to upload it as a PDF, that should be available to you and you can click on Google Drive and pull the form right out of there. If you use Dropbox and you have your documents in your Dropbox, you can pull from your Dropbox. Um, I don't have Box, so um, I'm assuming it works the same way as Dropbox and Google Drive uh, in, in basic formatting, so um, you would also be able to select documents from there. There are also zip forms. There are DocuSign forms. And then there is computer. If you have a document loaded to your computer that you would like to use, you simply select this computer button and you would be able to select the document that you would like to use and add it into this room. Now, no matter what format, so let's, let's do for my computer, it will pull it up like this. You go to downloads, and we're going to just FHA loan open. So it says my document has been added, right? But it's going to be added down here in Room Docs. So now I have to look. There it is, it's at the bottom. And it's a PDF. And you can see there isn't anything for me to view in this top screen because it's still loading. I have it in the box so that way you can view the documents. That is how I prefer to see my rooms because sometimes things are called different than what I know them as. So like I know a residential property disclosure is the one with all the boxes, right? Except there are like 10 different documents that are disclosures. And I had a heck of a time when somebody was asking me about this particular Appendix A residential property condition disclosure. 
uh, and I could not find it for the life of me because I didn't know it was called Appendix A. I didn't know that and therefore I couldn't find it. And it took me adding every disclosure that I could find. And finally, I was like, oh, that's the one. So for me personally, um, it is just easier for me to see this thumbprint view where I can actually see like kind of what the document looks like to make sure that I'm using the right one. Now, up here in this upper uh, right hand corner underneath the actions button, you're going to see the, th the grid view is what they call it. I call it a thumbnail view. It's basically the same thing, but you're going to see that there. And then next to it, you're going to see the list view. You can switch that. And then this is what it will look like. And if you know what your documents are called, this may be easier for you because you don't feel so overwhelmed with all of the images. I just am very visual and I need the images. So I keep mine as the grid view or the thumbnail view, however you know it. So that is how I choose to do it. And like I said, you can always add documents directly from your computer. Now for DocuSign forms, it's going to take just a second, but it will load up a box and we're going to talk about just the, where the different forms are. Just have to wait for the little box to pop up. There we go. So you want to leave it on the DocuSign forms library. That is, that is where you want to leave that. Then you can select from the library. You're going to see that there will be OREC. And all of the forms that come from OREC are going to be here, right? There are tons of different types of forms. I didn't even know some of these forms were like a real thing. Like, like keys and rekeying addendum. I did not know there was a specific addendum for that. So there are some things in here that are, you're gonna be like, wow, okay, that's super helpful. But then there are maybe one or two that are missing like a blank addendum where you're gonna have to actually go into the envelope for that template. There's also the Oakmar multi-offer procedure form, written disclosure waiving broker services. There are all sorts of things in there. Then you have the MLS, it's coming soon. Uh, listing addendum is in there. That's actually something that a lot of people were worried about because of all the new rules. So that is now in there. And then we have the forms in here that we, that are specific to our market center. So all of you know that we have the earnest money request form and submission form. I have them printed here in the office for um, you guys to just kind of grab a copy. Um, but you also have them in here as a fillable form that you would be able to fill out, print, and then do all of your um, things with. But these are available in here. They're forms that basically have come from us. Um, referral information form. Again, a smoke alarm addendum. I didn't even know that was a thing, but the point is, is that all of your addendums are located or um, all of your forms are located in this DocuSign forms button for you to have access to. Okay. So does anybody have any specific questions about the function of documents, where they're located, what the color coding means, how to combine, how to split, how to rename. Any questions about any of the functionality of documents? So Tiffany, whenever you combine a document, is there a way to get the pages? Like I want this to be page one and this to be page two. Is it based on the order you click the documents to be in? Um, yeah, so let, hold on, let me get the packet so that way we can, we can see it. So we're going to split them up and I want, let's see, this is gonna be testing one, two, three. Okay. So we're going to say we want document, we want page five to be the first page, and then we want page two to be the second page. 
And then we're just gonna put, uh, actually, I don't need a second document. We're just gonna see if the order five, two sticks, okay? So let me just make us little again so I can get to my button. And we'll hit save. Okay. Boop, boop, deep boop. Oh, testing one, two, three. Oh, wait. Give me one second. It's got to finish loading. <laughs> Sometimes I'm fast. Okay. So it did list page five as the first page and then followed by page two. So it is um, dependent on what order you put the pages in. So if you want page five to be the first page, then you wanna list page five comma page two. Um, with that being said, uh, you just wanna make sure that you're being careful with uh, your order. So that way you don't end up with page five being the first page, but then they're all in reverse order. You know what I mean? So whenever they're split, how do you know what order you're putting them all together in? When they're split, how do you know what order you're putting them all together in? They highlight blue. No, I mean, um, that's when, I mean, when they're already split, not when you are splitting them. Oh, when they're already split? Mm -hmm. um, I just know what the page order was in this. <laughs> uh, so, let's see, I hit the button, sorry. Um, so I knew what the page order was for my buyer packet. And this is just, I knew that this was the last page. So I know that it did, in fact, do that. This is page two of the packet. And... This is page two at the bottom, because I did five two, as mm -hmm. opposed to two five. So I think that that would just, I think it would just matter about um, if you've already split it, knowing what you've split, because like I said, just because you're splitting it, it keeps the original. The original doesn't go away. It just adds. The document. Right, but in normal situations, I'm not going to split up my contract and then put it back together. I'm going to have like a couple different contracts that I put together. So how do I know what order to put them in? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, that's that's almost a preference thing because as long as your documentation is all signed and correct. When you're combining, it doesn't combine them um, in any particular order. It combines the entirety of the documents, and then it just puts them in order according to how you've selected them. So if I was combining these ones, and I select two, and then I select three, and then I select four, and I go ahead and hit combine over here, it's going to put them in that order. So I've selected breakdown two first. It's going to put breakdown two first. So when you are selecting multiple documents to combine, it's going to put them in order according to how you have selected them in, in order. So when it comes to splitting and combining, the number one thing to remember is that majority of the time, you're not going to need to split apart your documents and put them back together. This is for those um, instances, like I was talking about with wet signatures, if you brought your um, listing agreement, your um, disclosures, your, <clears throat> um, what would be something else that you would sign? Maybe a lead-based paint disclosure, depending on the, the home's age. So if you had all of those things wet signed and you came into the office and you just shoved that packet onto the copier and scanned it in as a PDF, you would need to separate those items into their individual parts. You would need to have just the disclosure 
you would need to have just the listing agreement because those are things that you have to put in for compliance individually. You can't just take that packet and stick it into command. You have to have it separated out into those. So that is an example of what you would be um, breaking apart. Now, maybe you accidentally put page two and three, but you forgot page one when you did that break apart. The reason that you might be combining again is because you accidentally put one page in with the wrong packet. So you may just wanna archive all of that and start fresh, or you might just wanna add the page, however it is that you feel would best operate for you and for your command setup and for your DocuSign setup. But these are just examples to show you how to do it. So that way if something happens and you're like, dang, I need to do that. You will know how to actually maneuver inside of DocuSign to get it all kind of congruent and, and working for you. So that way you don't get frustrated because it's Saturday at six o'clock and you're trying to get something for your client and it's not working or you don't know where the buttons are. It's just mainly like um, a tutorial on how those things work. So there may not be instances where you need to break things apart and then put them back together. It may just simply be that uh, maybe you had your pages in the wrong order when you scan them in. And so you just need to reorder those pages. It's just um, a tool in your tool belt to kind of help you so that way if something does happen, you know how to address it without having to start all over. And then that would be frustrating. <laughs> and time consuming. So that's just the example of breaking it apart and putting it back together. Now, obviously for this particular example, I just used a, a, um, a buyer packet. This is actually a presentation packet that the RISE group uses. She provided it to us during the buyer consult class. And I just like to use it as an example because it happens to be a five page long document. And I also use it for like um, signing examples. So I have one that's signed that's saying, I presented all of this information to you because this is my value and you're, you're saying yes and you're gonna sign this other agreement. So I, I just included in there, um, just so that way I have examples of some of these things. But like you were saying, it's not something that is going to be happening every time you have a transaction. It's just a tool that's available to you for you to use in case. So that way, you know, like I said, if the unlikely does happen, you have a way to address it without being like, ah, <laughs> what do I do? I have to start all over. You don't have to do that. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question or did I just like? Yeah, I think so. I, I think my question was just like the way that you select each, like the first page you check is going to be page one and then the next one you check will be page two um, because I see myself using that more to kind of combine it all into one document versus but they're both good to know because there is going to probably be an instance where I'm going to be like ah oh, Tiffany told me that and that's going to help me so much yeah so they are like order specific so when you're splitting it apart the page that you put first as your split will be the um, one that ends up in the front when it creates that new document. And the same goes for the buyer packet. So like, like I had told you, um, and I had selected two, one, and then three. Well, that's actually the example that I use when I combine these because this is page like two or three, this is page two. Um, so they, they're all out of order in this packet because I didn't select them in the correct order when I combined them. So it is, it is click sensitive when it comes to uh, the order. Um, any other questions when it comes to the types of documents that are in here? Any more questions on the splitting or anything like that? I have a question, not on the splitting, um, but on the top of your screen, you had a certification of something. How do you get that? This part? Uh, yep, that part. Okay, so when you do send a document through your envelopes and people sign it and it comes back to you, your envelope is going to go from draft or um, it may be blue and say waiting for signatures. Once those signatures come through, it's going to say completed. When something is completed, it automatically uploads 
a signed document that is a PDF that you cannot change into your DocuSign or into your documents tab into your room. And it will be down here in your room docs. See, I have an exclusive right to sell right here that's signed. In addition to giving you the signed document itself, it will also give you a receipt. So you had a transaction, this person signed for this part of the transaction, here is your receipt. And it will tell you what you're getting a receipt for depending. So I did not label my, that's a big no, no. I did not label my envelope. So I sent it and all it says is please DocuSign. I have no idea what this, <laughs> what I've signed or what they've signed <laughs> because all it did was give me this certified document. However, you can see down here, I mean, it gives you some of the, um, the details about what's happening, right? So it was a one page document. I can guarantee you this was a blank addendum. Yes. Yeah, this was probably a blank addendum, but I probably didn't label that either. This was probably just an example one, but that's why it's so important to label your envelopes because otherwise you're going to have like 50 of these receipts for a please DocuSign and you're not gonna know which is which. But either way, these are the receipts that are sent to you saying that you are now in, um, you now have in your documents tab, the signed document that you've sent. So I'm actually gonna move these by selecting them because I have a folder for certified documents. I use this room a lot as my testing for when I'm like looking at stuff. So that's why there are many documents and like weird things in here. Um, so you can see now that I have my certified, my certifications up here. Now the reason that they give you the certified um, documents is why you have an extra step in the process that some of you may not be familiar with. So um, this is really helpful when it comes to your legalities. There is no way that somebody could say to you, I never saw that lead-based paint disclosure because not only do you have the lead-based paint disclosure in your DocuSign room and the signed lead-based paint document itself, which will also be timestamped. So you can see I signed this uh, buyer packet here. It gives a full timestamp on here, but you also would be able to provide a certified receipt saying, well, it's included in my listing packet and it's saying here that this was completed at this time. Now, like I said, I did not, uh, these were just examples when I was trying to like work through issues. So I don't think I have a lot of things um, stamped on this one. Yeah, see this has all my different pages and I, I didn't label anything because I was just trying to work through a problem. So, but the point is, is that these um, certified uh, documents will allow you a certain level of protection because you'll have proof that things were sent, things were signed and that the buyer or the seller, depending on who you're working with, have acknowledged the information that you've provided them so that way you're not held at that legal level of, um, well, you never told me about lead-based paint. Yes, I did. <laughs> or um, you signed a contract saying that you were going to be buying or listing your house through me, and now you've sold it directly to the buyer and you're trying to cut me out and we have an agreement that's legal and you can't do that. I see you signed it, I have a piece of paper, I have a receipt, no returns. <laughs> Do you ever get something that says like they opened it? Since you started talking about that, I was wondering. Cause like on, in the history of the room, it'll say like so-and-so signed it. But I'm just curious if they didn't sign it, if it would say John Smith opened. Um, I don't believe it says that they've opened it. I have, um, that's a completely empty one. I have a couple of envelopes in here. Um, what it will say is it will say waiting for signature. 
as you can see, like I said, I have a lot of ones that are just like to me because I was troubleshooting some issues. I don't think I have any examples in this room. Yeah, I was just yeah. curious. But they do say that they're waiting for it. And I do believe that you may get an email notification when things are happening with the envelope that you have sent. So it, I believe you get a notification that they have viewed it or that they have received it, but I don't know that it changes the status in this section. Oh, here's one that I have a couple of. I'm all of them because again, it was a test, but it does say like waiting for signatures, but I don't know that it actually says uh, this part gets updated. I think this part just specifies if it's signed or not. Um, but you do get email notifications. Um, I'm just not sure how specific or how frequent those happen. Yeah, I think if I remember right, um, it's super helpful with like title companies because I think it does send you a thing stating so-and-so open your document. So like if I email a title um, the offer and everything, it'll let me know when they open it, which is good because then I know that they for sure did get it. Right. That's what I was curious because sometimes people will be like, well, you haven't sent it to me yet. And then if you can see, well, they opened it, you know, that yeah. you're good and you're not. It, and I don't know if it does the same thing if you're sending it for a signature because it's not going just straight via email. Yeah, that's the part I'm not sure about. Um, I will say that there are options in the envelopes for you to select or add participants that are not signers and just receive a copy. And that may change what is visible on that, like waiting for signatures versus signed. It may say received or opened or something like that if they're supposed to um, have a different role other than signing. It may just be the default that it's waiting for signature or signed um, because they're a signer. Um, but I do know that I have told a couple of people that um, have admins, uh, or I'm sorry, that don't have admins but are using somebody as a TC to include that transaction coordinator as they receives a copy and they do see that they've received the email. So I'm not sure if that's helpful um, in answering that question, but I do know that um, it, it just specifies depending on role. So it may, it's possible, but I do know that they get emails. <laughs> do you know if you can um, like withdraw a document that so say I send Sherry a document to sign but it has a mistake can I withdraw it or do I just call her and say hey don't sign that one I'm sending you a new one you can void oh okay so as a draft because I haven't actually sent it to anybody I have the option of deleting it once it's completed I can't do anything they've signed it right but let me just pretend Roles, agent, and we'll go with, I think this is a buyer. I forget what I'm working on. Anyway, let's see. Um, Next. Ah. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I uh, forgot to put an email address because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Can't email it to somebody if they don't have an email address in there. Silly nugget. Okay, next. Okay. So once it is sent, okay, 
So you're going to see that it's blue because it's waiting for somebody to do something, right? So when you select, when you right click on it, it will give you different options than if it were a draft because a draft hasn't been sent to anybody. So you can just straight up delete it and a completed you can't ever touch again because it's already been signed and anything within that envelope is now sealed for all eternity. So copy is the only option, but if it's been blue, meaning it needs to be viewed or it's waiting for signatures, you have the option of voiding it. And when you void it, you can put in a reason and say, um, miss, um, actually let's say, um, correction on price needed. Say you accidentally put $100,000 and it was supposed to be $10,000 as the down payment. That's a zero is a big deal. <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and put void. And now you're going to see that that envelope has been voided. Now, with that being said, you can't really edit it. But if you're, say, waiting on a signature and somebody you've gotten a notification that they've opened it and viewed it, but they haven't signed it. You, when you right click on that, I mean, it's not going to now because now it's voided, but you're going to ha you're going to see that there's a resend button in there and you can resend the envelope kind of like getting them a push notification. Like, Hey, you looked at it, but you didn't sign anything. Hello. <laughs> so there are different options available when it's been sent and you can void it. And this will sit here for all eternity showing you that you voided that document because it's not going to say, please DocuSign. It's going to say listing packet or whatever, but it will let you see the, the reason behind it. So it'll say um, who was involved in it. It will show you the documents that were in there. And I believe it will show you the reason somewhere. Maybe not. It might not show you the reason. It may just be an option for you to. I bet if you hover over the word void, it may be. On the page you were just on. Oh. I think it was envelope history, is where you were. I don't know. Click on more. Yeah, view. There you go. Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't know. It did let me put in a reason, but I don't know that it shows you the reason. But I don't, I don't, you might not know. I mean, if you voided it, you would know why you voided it. So you could always just add a note if you wanted to. But, um, oh, maybe under history. Or it could just be like command. When I return a commission, I type a reason why, but they don't ever see it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it could just be one of those things where maybe it just goes into a weird place and I just don't know where it is. But the point is that you can void it as long as it hasn't been signed. And I believe that... Now, I guess the real question would be if you could void it if there were multiple signers and the first person signed and the others hadn't. I would say probably not. You would have to resend it and just let it sit there and tell them don't sign it yeah i know in the beginning you could tell them just don't sign it i'm going to send you another one but i don't think you could cancel it that was in the beginning of all this though because i would hope that if there was a problem and your buyer or your lister knew that and saw it that they wouldn't sign it like if it said i'm going to put down a hundred thousand dollars and they were like haha no i said a hundred dollars you, I would, me personally, I would not sign that saying, yeah, okay, you know, so um, I would hope that they would tell you and you would just say, okay, I'm going to avoid that one, don't do anything, and you would be able to avoid it and then send them a new one, but if, say, wife signs it and says, hey, by the way, I saw this weird thing where it says I'm going to put $100,000 down and I'm totally not going to do that you would have to just say, okay, I'm gonna send you a new one with the corrected $100 and tell your husband not to sign the previous one, just delete it. You would have to actually like verbalize that part, I'm thinking. Any other questions on documents uh, that you can get in here, where they are, 
splitting, adding, fun stuff, moving them around, why it's important to have folders, anything like that. Okay, so before we finish up this class, uh, Sherry and I kind of stumbled upon this this morning. And so I just want to um, make sure that everybody's kind of aware of it. If you start a room inside of DocuSign and you create it independent and then you go back later on and you create an opportunity and you hit start transaction, those two things will not link. They will be over here. And so then when you need to put documents into command for compliance, those documents will not be attached to that opportunity. You have to start an opportunity and hit the start transaction button inside of your opportunity in order to create a room that is linked to your opportunity and to your DocuSign. If you do it where you create the room first, you won't be able to pull those documents into command, right? So I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that you start the opportunity, then start the DocuSign room. And that is what allows for that, that pulling of documents directly from the room because um, I don't want people to feel frustrated that they can't get their DocuSign to work. Um, and get their documents in for compliance. So just know that you there's an order to it. You have to start in command. Now, if you do do it the other way around and you uh, need to still submit from uh, or into command, you can download what has been signed and drag it over. Um, however, there's a way to move them in here and I'm gonna go over that in the envelopes class next week because it happens in envelopes. Um, so if you have any questions or if you've encountered this, make sure that you are prepared for DocuSign next week because um, I'm going to be going over how to kind of manipulate that into the new room because there is a way to do it, um, but your envelopes have to be completed in order for that to happen. So you have to make sure all your signing is done. Hold on. So you can transfer a document from one DocuSign to the next room, from one room to the next? Yes and no. It's not moving the document, it's moving the envelope. When you move an envelope from room A to room B, it brings all of the documentation with it. So it will bring the PDF signed, it will bring the certified document receipt, and it will put them automatically into your new room. It will not sort them, everything will go into room docs and you will have to move them into the appropriate folders, but if by chance you do accidentally start a DocuSign room and then go, oh bananas, I needed an opportunity and you have to start a new one, you can move envelopes over. And there is a way to do that. So that's gonna be super handy because I had both buyer and seller, but I only started the DocuSign room for the buyer. And then it sucked having to download everything PDF and then upload to the seller so now I will tell you it it moves it so if you have to um if you have to duplicate you would not just move the envelope you would want to copy it and say copy for listing mm. and then move the copy for listing envelope over that's gonna be super helpful I'm excited for next week Yes, so that's why I just wanted to mention it because um, it was something that Sherry and I kind of, well, Sherry stumbled upon it and her and I were talking about um, what that may or may not need to be discussed in the next class. So um, next week is envelopes. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over how to get your templates in there. We're going to go over how to add um, an initials box and signature box because we do have a couple of people who've had a third buyer or a third person that was part of the listing. And so um, I think somebody right now is actually selling a church and they've got like a board of three people who have to all sign. And most of our documents are templated for two. So it's, I'm gonna just gonna go over how to do all of that in the envelope so that way you can get all the signatures that you need. Um, and then the week after that, we're gonna talk about templates. So that way you have the opportunity to create your own templates 
which will be accessible in your envelopes. So that's, I'm kind of trying to make it all feng shui and flow into one. <laughs> so documents this time, envelopes next time, and then we'll talk about templates because there are a couple of things with templates that I wanna share with you, especially the uh, duplication feature, um, especially in regards to the blank addendum because uh, apparently there are sometimes a need for multiple addendums within the same um, envelope. And I wanna make sure everybody knows how to create that template and then create multiples so that way they can have multiples of the same document in the same envelope because you can't do that if it's, you can't put the same document in five times. You have to have multiples it of the document. Put in. Yeah. Yeah. Because it only knows a document by the name. So right. You can only have one of each. Exactly. So, so we're going to go over all that stuff on, on next week and the week after with how to make those templates and how to use your envelopes and move everything over, do all that stuff. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for holding, holding it in there with me for the beginning half of this class. It was, um, I spent a busy morning. <laughs> and uh, like I said, bring your questions. <laughs> thank you, Tiffany. You're welcome. See you guys later. Bye.